Graduation is just weeks away for seniors at Wellesley College, but before the pomp and circumstance, students have one other hoop to jump through. This week, the Boston Globes from the Archives pays tribute to an unusual tradition. For Wellesley students, it's an annual rite of spring. Donning their caps and gowns, seniors gather to push hoops down Tupelo Lane using wooden sticks. Younger classmates are on hand to cheer them on. Hoop rolling at Wellesley dates back to 1895, when it was part of the school's May Day festivities, a day of fun and games where students could take a break from life's worries. The race is even featured in the Julia Roberts movie, Mona Lisa Smile. In 1939, Harvard Lampoon President Ned Reed became the first and only man to win the race, disguised as a Wellesley co-ed. Students showed their appreciation by pushing him into Lake Waban, launching one of the race's most well-known traditions. For years, the winner was declared the first to get married. By the 1980s, it was the first to be a CEO. Today, the winner is simply proclaimed to reach happiness and success, however she defines it. To learn more about Wellesley's hoop-rolling race and see the Globe's collection, visit fromthearchivesbostonglobe.com slash archives. Okay, and with me here is this year's Hoop Race winner, Alex Nagorny and Ian Graham, director of Wellesley College Archives. Welcome to both of you. So, Thank Alex, you. Do, do you get to practice? Do you get to rehearse at all? Yes, you some uh, some seniors do choose to rehearse or practice. Uh, my friend Molly convinced me to practice with yeah. her. We just rolled our hoops back after we purchased them at the co-op at Wellesley, which is called The Hoop. And uh, we purchased our hoops and we rolled them back just to do a few trial runs. And how long is the actual race? Uh, it's a few hundred yards, I would say. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, on the website it says you use a stick. I didn't see any sticks in your hands, though. Um, that's one of the reasons. When you buy the hoop, you get a stick with it. My friend and I practiced with and without the stick, and um, I got my method down, so I decided not to use oh, the so stick. Oh, so it's not required that you use the stick? Right. But now this one looks like an antique. It's got all kinds of messages on it. Yeah, so this is the hoop that I used uh, for hoop rolling, and um, this is the hoop that is passed down. A lot of the hoops are used to pass down to Little Sisters, which is another tradition mm -hmm. at Wellesley. And this is the house president hoop um, for Severance Hall. It says Severance on the front right here. And um, this one is passed down each year to the new house president. Uh, this one is full of tradition, so I didn't want to mess this one up if I used it. So I decided to buy a new one, and I'll pass this one down to my little sister. Yeah, so you'll sign her assignment. Now, Ian, what's the one you have over there? Uh, this is an earlier one. that uh, date, The first date Smaller. on this is uh, 1938, and it has um, the names of uh, racers from 38, 41, 43, 45, 47, and 48. So and that so. would be harder. That's smaller, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And they did usually <laughs> use sticks in the earlier yeah. um, races. And how did it get going? I mean, Well, it's interesting. Uh, although it seems to have really gained traction in 1895, and that uh, seems to be when the, um, the continuity of it began, it, there's records in the class of 1883 that suggest that rolling hoops was part of some of the activities that that class at least was involved in, and so it suggests to us that it might predate that, but just isn't well documented. And uh, what I find really interesting about it is how mysterious a lot of the earlier uh, photographs of hoop rolling are. There's um, <laughs> some photographs that make it very hard to understand exactly what was happening, uh, as opposed to a lot of the photographs that suggest a race that's taking place. Hmm. And uh, so in 1895... Was it a race back then? Uh, it doesn't sound like it. In yeah. 1895, uh, there was the May Day festivities, as was mentioned, and uh, so this was part of general frolicking that was taking place. It was a celebration that winter was coming to an end. Uh, we just finished winter recently uh, here this year. And <laughs> yeah. so, but there was a lot more school left, actually, back then. Uh, the cl the uh, commencement wasn't until towards the end of June or after the middle of June. And so... It was the beginning of May. It was a time that there still was quite a bit of work left for the students to do, but it was a day they could get out and, and frolic a bit, celebrate, and uh, take some time off from what was actually a much more regimented oh. schedule than is the case now, <laughs> although you might disagree yeah, well. with that being there. <laughs> How many of the seniors actually take part in it? Um, our senior class is about 600. I would say maybe two or 300 come out each year. Yeah. And wh why not more? I mean... Um, I don't know. I think it is, uh, it is 
pretty early on a Saturday morning. Oh, it's early. Yeah. Okay, what time is it at? <laughs> 9 a.m. Yeah. And um, the tradition is that your little sister saves a spot for you in line, and it's a pretty narrow, it's maybe just as wide as a driveway, so it's pretty narrow. So if you're too far back... Oh, you've you got no chance of winning. If you're exactly. Too people just walk and roll their hoop with their friends, so you have to get a good spot in the front. And thankfully, I had a really, I had a very dedicated little Did sister. Did she come in really early in the morning, yes, or like yeah. what time? She came in at 6 a.m., but um, some little sisters sleep out overnight, or wow. when I got there, I got there around 8.20, there were tents set up and um, sleeping bags on the ground. Little sisters were sleeping out for their bigs. It was last Saturday. Yes. How was the weather? Beautiful. I can't remember. Yeah. Beautiful. It was really nice. And um, afterwards, you got thrown into the lake, yeah. the winter, that's the tradition, and uh, the water... Was not cold at all. It was very really? refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. How did that get going? Did it really start with the with the That's lampoon That's our understanding. Guy? That's that, funny. That the president of the Harvard Lampoon, Ned Reed, was uh, was able to win the competition. Now, I can't believe that he actually disguised himself that well. That that would seem hard to believe. It does seem like, <laughs> and I'm I'm speaking outside of the official records yes. here. It does seem like there must have been some collusion. Must have been a little bit of collusion with yes. the lampoon, if you follow me. At all. Exactly. Yeah. So. All right, Ian Graham, Alex Nagorny. Congratulations Thank on your you. big win. <laughs>